How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today we're going to talk about maximum power point tracking for solar panels and why it matters to you. Many power banks actually does not have maximum power point tracking. The more expensive one has this. What the heck is it? In layman terms, you can kind of think of it like riding a bicycle. The maximum power point tracking portion of the bicycle could be thought of as the gearing. You know when you set it in a very high gear, you can push very, very hard and it just barely moves very, very slowly. If you set it on a very low gear, you can pedal very quickly, but yet your bicycle doesn't move very far. So you want to gear in such a way so that you move from point A to point B at the fastest. Now we can think of solar panels as something similar. I have four 100 watt solar panels and the open circuit voltage is around 80 volts or so. Power is measured by the voltage times the current. Open circuit voltage means there's zero currents. So you can have solar panels laying out there, a thousand volts, whatever volts, but if there's no current flowing, there's no power transferred. But as soon as you put a load on it, that voltage starts to go down and down and down to a point where, let's say if you short circuit it, then yeah, it's gonna get very, very close to zero. But in that case, there's also very little power transferred. So today I'm gonna install a battery, a MPPT controller. I have a 24 volt battery system, 400 watts of solar to plug into this to test everything out. Bacterial Power also sells solar cables. This is a hundred foot roll of black cable. Cross section of six millimeter squared, which is 10 gauge. Ji Jang PN Tech Technology Co. Looking at the cross section, let's strip this. There's an outer plastic sheath, and then there's an inner core. Weighs in at 5.2 pounds. Six pairs of crimps, MC4 connectors, and it even comes with a tool to open these up, tighten them. The crimping tool, tinned copper. So let me just scratch a little bit. It looks copper underneath. And if you look at the cross section area, it is copper as well. I'm gonna divide this in half, so two 50 foot sections. So I got it rolled out somewhat large. 31, 24 and a half, 31 plus 24 and a half. Divided by two, so this is the average diameter. Diameter times pi is circumference times 13 circles of these. And then we gotta add 56 inches divided by 12. So we got 99 feet. Am I missing a foot somewhere? It's probably just from my calculation. This is not exactly circular, but it's close enough. I'm just gonna grab a pair of them. You find the midpoint here. So I get 50 feet exactly right there. We got the plastic housings and these crimp terminals and they fit in together like this. The male side actually uses the larger diameter connector and this one goes on the male side. It only goes that far in. That means these wires, I can actually go in a little bit further. This is a six millimeter square crimp. So we're using the biggest one, thread it through. There we have it, nice and crimped. For the other side, nice and crimped as well. You put this thing on, it's just kind of loose, right? Water could leak in, but it turns out the connector will squeeze this. The outer shell actually pushes the grommet inside and turns this into a snug fit. Put in the sleeve, putting the self-tightening grommet. This hole here is for this connector here, so you can slip it right in and hold it into place. This one has a bunch of different holes with different styles of grip. That's really for these ridges along this nut here. And so I can put that in, turn it. Cool, so now we made our own solar MC4 cable. 50 foot right here. Second pair. Yes, they will connect. The manual. This is a 60 amp MPPT solar charge controller. Maximum solar open circuit voltage is 150 volts. The battery voltage can either be 12, 24, 36, or 48. So if you do 60 amp multiplied by each of these voltages, you get this wattage over here. That's the maximum. So if you're using only a 12 volt battery, you're gonna be limited by 780 watts. However, if you use a 48 volt system, you can pump 3,120 watts through this system. 
So a pretty huge difference here is the internal wiring can only support up to 60 amps. At the bottom, you have your ground connection, temperature, plus and minus of solar, plus of minus of battery, plus and minus of the load, RS485 connection. And at the top, there's a exhaust fan. On the back, there is nothing. The label is on one side, the other side has nothing. I have these Golden Mate 12 volt, 200 amp hour batteries. Together, they're 24 volts. I'm using two gauge cable, but I can only do 60 amps with this Bateria power. So I've made this connector cable that will adapt from two gauge cable to these eight gauge cables. This is rather a temporary solution. So I used a post with a 5 16 hole just stuffed it with enough copper to fill up the rest of the hole after I put in my wire. I just shoved it all in there, crimped it, and then put over this heat shrink. Now we can attach this securely to this breaker box. And then on the other end, I've crimped these ferrules for eight gauge wires. Black for negative. White for positive. New cables, solar panel negative, solar panel positive, final tightening, 25.69. So the black is negative, battery minus over there, good. This is solar, negative, good. I have the 50 foot solar cables I made hooked up. We can now double check the voltage right here. Make sure we have the correct polarity. Negative is black, it says 69 volts, so we're good to go. Turn on the battery over here, and it should turn on. Look at that. I'm probing the solar panel voltage here. I have this meter hooked up in series to measure the current of the solar panels. So now I'm gonna flip the switch on and we see the voltage goes up to 78 volts, and then it slowly ramps it down just right there, and that's the MPPT. The sun is coming out a little bit more. The current is increasing. Voltage is increasing also to track the maximum power point. If we turn it off, 1.9 volts. Let me turn it back on. It starts off at 24 milliamps, jumps to one amp. Oh, it's staying there around for a while, 67 volts. 1.17 amps, 64 volts, 63 volts. It's not trying to maximize the current by itself, nor the voltage by itself, but the product of these two. Right now it's about noon and I got full sun on the solar. If I turn it back on, 77.7 7 volts. It's not drawing any power right now. Very little amperage. And the voltage here keeps on dropping a little bit. 54 volts, 55, 56, 57. 58, so it's not pulling as hard. 50, 60, and then it pulled it back down. See, 58, 57, kind of searching for the maximum wattage. Every time you see the voltage change, it's doing a slight adjustments. If we look at the AC change, right there we can see it adjust the load every one-tenth of a second almost. Right when you turn on this controller, it stays around 80 volts for about six seconds or so. It's just starting up before it starts its MPPT action. Right when it does it, you can see the voltage drops lower and lower. After about one second or so, it drops to the intended voltage or very close to it. The voltage goes down a little bit further and it tries to hunt for the perfect voltage for maximum power transfer. You might ask, how much does this matter? It might vary between 10 to 45% more efficiency depending on the weather, but no matter what, with an MPPT controller, it's always going to be more efficient than one without. While we're talking about the most efficiencies out of solar panels, you might also think about, hey, what about solar tracking? You can have these solar panels that just kind of moves along with the sun. So this should certainly give it a lot more solar, right? It's in the ballpark of giving you about 20 to 25% more. But every time I see, you know those solar things that looks like a flower petal, right? I look at that and I'm like, well, there's so many motors in that, so many points of failure. That's why most installations you see, it's just a fixed solar thing. It, it, it doesn't move because there's less moving parts and an MPPT controller is actually electronic. So there's no moving parts and it actually would last much longer. Motors, right? Those break. You're gonna have to go out there, 
change the motors, go lubricate the motors. Sometimes they might offer you as a DIY person to have a solar tracker for like four panels. I would try to shy away from that and spend the money on an MPPT capable solar charge controller over this motorized stuff. Thanks for watching this video. I hope this was educational. If you guys are interested in getting a battery a MPPT solar charge controller, check out my Amazon affiliate link down in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video. Until next time.